In this video, we will go through Windows 11 installation process on Proxmox 9. And if you are running Proxmox 8, this tutorial can still apply, because the process is exactly the same. To install Windows 11 as a virtual machine on Proxmox, the only requirement is that you have your Proxmox server already configured. And if you are not sure how to do it, it's not a big deal really, because you can follow the video where we went through step-by-step -step process of Proxmox installation and configuration. And again, this process is exactly the same for Proxmox 8 and for Proxmox 9. And once you have that Proxmox up and running, the first thing we need is the Windows 11 installation disk, the ISO, yes? And conveniently, Microsoft provides official ISO on their website, so all you need to do is to Google Download Windows 11 Disk Image. You have that multi-edition ISO for x86 devices. That's what we need. So validating your request. English International. Confirm. And I say 64-bit download. It's 5.4 gig. So that might take a while. Now once you have it downloaded, you have to upload it back to Proxmox uh, hypervisor. So you go back to, back to your Proxmox, you choose that local PVE or wherever you have your ISO images. You click on those ISO images and you click that upload. Then you just select the file you have just downloaded. It's in my downloads, yes. It's even 5.8, it says, 5.8 gig. And I just click that select. <laughs> I don't know, here it says again 5.43. Never mind. I just click that upload now. And this process shouldn't take long if you have it on the same kind of uh, location, yes? And now we are waiting for task OK. It should display. Oh, that's what it is. Task OK means the import was successful. So we can close it now. And in theory, we've got the official ISO here, and we could just start to create our VM. But uh, we need one more ISO. We need something called vert.io win driver package. What I mean, if we Google vert.io or maybe Windows vert.io drivers, we press enter, you can find them on official Proxmox website. That's the one we need. I click that first link and it even explains what it is. Vert.io drivers are para virtual drivers for KVM Linux. Basically what it means, this is the set of drivers that Windows can use when it's running as a virtual machine on Proxmox. And what we really need, we have to scroll down a bit and here you can download either the latest stable or the most recent version of that package. And they say normally the drivers are pretty stable, so one should try out the most recent release first. So let's do that and see if they work correctly. If you have problems with that most recent one, then you can try the latest stable, yes? But we will go for the most recent one. And the download starts automatically, but this one is smaller, 693 megabytes. And once we have it downloaded, we repeat the same process. We go to Proxmox and we upload that vert.io this time. Go to Downloads. Vert.io, select and upload. That's going very quick. And we expect task OK. And we can close this window now. And now we are ready to create our virtual machine, our Windows 11 virtual machine. So we can click this button, create VM. And maybe before we do anything here, note this little help button in the bottom left corner. If you click on that, it will open another tab in your browser. And this is basically an instruction what it is about. Every single field that you can see here when you create the ma virtual machine, this is kind of like instruction for every for each of those steps. Like it says the node, the physical server on which the VM will run. For me it's PVE because I only have one node. The virtual machine identifier, I will use maybe 138, let's say. The name, you can call it whatever. Let's call it Win11. And that's all we need here. So we can click Next. Now we have the OS. If you go back here, you've got that OS settings section, but I want to show you one more thing. Maybe let's close these tabs. Let's open a new tab. And there is also another website. You have to Google for Windows 11 guest best practices. And this is what I'm talking about. It's directly from Proxmox again. So we click that. And here you can see some further information on specifically for the Windows 11, what you should choose in this, you know, for example, in this section OS. 
which means you can refer to both this one, which comes from that help button, and also that one, which is from Proxmox Windows 11 Guest Best Practices. And here we can see select Microsoft Windows 11 2022 2025. So if we go back here, Guest OS, Microsoft Windows, and we have version 11 2022 2025. Now it asks us where we have the ISO image. Is the ISO for the Windows 11 itself? So I've got it in local storage. If I use that drop down menu, I can choose that Windows 11 ISO. However, you have a, another button here. It says add additional drive for Vertio drivers. And that's what we also need because we downloaded it already. So we tick that and now we choose that Vertio. This way we can load both ISOs at the same time. And once we have that configured, we can click Next. We can also click that little Advanced button. Here it doesn't change anything, but on some of those tabs it might give us additional information. So let's click that Next. This is the System setting. We've got Graphic Card Default, Machine Q35. We can refer back again to that doc documentation. And here it is, Machine Type. This document says that you can choose between the default Intel 440FX or the Q35 chipset, which also provides a virtual PCI bus, which might be desired if you want to pass through PCI Express hardware. So I will leave it as it is, Q35. And the BIOS I will leave also as it is. The EFI storage, you usually choose the same where you keep all other virtual machines, and I have only one, so for me it's that local LVM. But if you have multiple, you would have to choose the one where all your VMs live. Now, SCSI controller, let's refer to the documentation. And it mentions that it is highly recommended to use Vertio SCSI or, or Vertio Block controller for performance reasons and because they are better maintained. So let's go back, let's see what choices do we have here. And I can see that Vertio SCSI, so I will pick this one. Also, QEMU agent, I don't think I'm, it's worth for me to <laughs> read everything for you. So basically you can refer to the documentation what it is all about, okay? You know where to find it. You just click that little help button and that's it. But basically I want the QEMU agent, the TPM storage, what the TPM is, first of all. TPM, TPM is Trusted Platform Module, and it's a new, like, emulated uh, specialized chip that Windows 11 requires on a computer for enhanced security. So you have to have it chosen, and you have to have it configured for Windows 11. It's different from Windows 10. It was not necessary for Windows 10. So we choose the same, uh, for me it's the same storage, you know, but basically that's what you need. The same storage where your EFI storage is. You, you should match it here. And version, you have to have version 2.0 for Windows 11 as well, but it's already chosen. And with that config, we can click Next. Here what I want to do, maybe I will increase this uh, disk size. I think 64 is recommended, so maybe we will just use the 64 or maybe 80, let's say. Regarding cache, if we check the documentation, you can find like uh, further information, but basically for Windows 11, you either choose no cache, or maybe you want to use write back, but no cache is usually the safer option. If that setup is on your SSD drive, you might also want to tick the discard, which is trim option for your SSD, SSD drive, and I tend to use that SSD emulation. It's just to make sure that the system understands it's based on SSD drive. So I go next, CPU, and the Proxmox 8 and Proxmox 9 by default will choose the one with AES instructions and that's correct choice for Windows 11 or what I tend to do is I change to host. What host means all instructions that my CPU has all those instructions will be available for this virtual machine but if you run it on Proxmox 7 which is pretty old right now the Proxmox 7 had I believe KVM 64. <laughs> If you, for example, migrate your virtual machine from Proxmox 7, this is bad, you know? If you left that default setting for Proxmox 7, your Windows will be painfully slow, because Windows added some uh, like extra updates. Basically what I mean, you either need AES version that this encryption system is supported, or maybe you want to choose host. And that's what I do. And number of course depends on, I would suggest at least two, but the more you can assign the better performance of the Windows virtual machine of course. Plus if you've got some fancy processor like has multiple cores, you might want to read about that NUMA option, because you might want to have it ticked as well. But for me it's okay, I don't have to do it. Again refer to the documentation, yeah? And I click Next. Memory, the more you can assign the better, again. 
let's say 8192, 8 gig. Ballooning device means you can have like a dynamic uh, allocation of memory. So I will say maybe 4096 here. It will be like uh, dynamically allocated, but I can also turn it off and say, and I, I can say, I don't want that ballooning device. It's up to you. Some of the operating systems do not like this being on. Windows should work fine with that, but if you've got a lot of memory, you don't have to worry much about it. Let's say for me, I will disable it and I will click next, but if you left it enabled, it's not bad uh, setting. Network, well, if you've got some multiple bridges or multiple VLANs, that's where you configure it. The model, you should left that para-virtualized one. If you have different one, just go back to that para-virtualized. This is the best setting for Windows 11. Now you just click next, and this is just the overview of all of your settings. And I click finish. Now the virtual machine is being created. We can see 138, and it will oh, already name is shown, Windows 11. And now I can just click on it, and I can start it. This may take a while. You can see it's up now, so I can double click here on that. You can see press any key to boot from CD. Yes, that's what I want to do. I press space. And you have to be pretty quick with that. If you wait for too long, it will say, like, it will display error. It will want to boot over IPv4. That's not what you need. You want to start your VM. You want to double click on that and press space or any other button to start from CD DVD. Because this is what you should end up with. And for me, indeed, it is English United Kingdom. It was automatically detected. I click next. Keyboard. Yes, correct. I want to install Windows 11. I agree that everything will be deleted. Click next. Product key. This is the stage where you paste your product key. But what you can do, you can also choose that I don't have a product key. But then on the next stage, well, let's wait for it. Here on this stage, you will have to choose a Windows version that you either have key somewhere. Maybe you don't have it now, yes? Or maybe you want to purchase a Windows key. So make sure at this stage you choose correct Windows version. For me, I want to install Windows 11 Pro. But if you have a key for home or education, that's where you have to have it right, because your key will not work. The easiest way is to just paste the key on the previous step, then the Windows version is chosen automatically. But this is the other way that you can use. And now we go next. And this is standard installation process. You read, of course, that very interesting and entertaining document. You accept it. And now you can see it was searching for disks but couldn't find any. And this is where we need those Vert.io drivers. Windows 11 currently cannot read or write to the disk that is allocated to it. Remember, we configured 80 gig disk, but it's not shown. That's where we have to click that load driver. And now we have to browse to that other ISO, to this Vert.io disk. And you can see a list of various drivers. Let's go to that AMD64. Let's click on that Windows 11. And I just say OK. The driver is chosen, Red Hat Vertio SCSI Pass-Through Controller. So I click on that and I say Install. And now Windows can see this drive. But before we go any further, it's worth to load another driver, just in case. I mean, not just in case, because you might <laughs> have a problem if you don't do that. So I say Load Drivers. Not entirely sure why it shows that screen again, but you accept that and you can browse again to that uh, Vert.io. If you chose the ballooning device, that's another driver you will have to load. You would have to go to that balloon again down to Windows 11, AMD64, and you would have to load this one as well. But because I didn't choose that ballooning device, I need only NetKVM. This is for networking. This is for basically to be able to connect to the internet. And I choose the driver for Windows 11 again, AMD64. Okay, we tick on that again and we install it. Now with those two drivers, we can click that next button. Now I say install. This step might take a little bit longer as the actual installation process. It restarts. It says it can actually may restart a few more times. Let's see. And you just continue with the standard installation process. United Kingdom, yes, that's true for me. The key keyboard layout, yes, United Kingdom, that's fine. 
second keyboard, up to you, I will skip, I have just one. Now we will check for updates, that's where we would need that uh, networking uh, driver. We can see it's connecting, so it's fine, it's working fine. And it says it will restart before we continue. Now we can name your device. I will say Win11, say next. And it restarted again. Installer asks how we would like to use this device. For me, it will be the personal use, so I say next. And now it decided that it's going to download some updates. This took a while, but we can now continue with the installation process. And now it asks you to sign in to the Microsoft account. And if you haven't got a Microsoft account yet, that's where you can create one. But I already have one, so I can use it here. The password, the password for your Microsoft account is not the email account. And we can now sign in. I can create a pin. Say OK. I say no. If you already use that Microsoft account, that's where you can recover the data. But I just say continue. It restores from the most recent machine I used on 18th of June 2025. I don't think there was anything interesting there, because this is kind of like a test account. But it shouldn't take long. It says it get, it's getting things ready for me. That means the process is close to an end. It's nearly done. But we will need to do one more thing. I say skip, skip, only save files to this PC, I don't want any backups yet, not now, I don't want to import anything, it's up to you obviously. A lot and lots, lots and lots, and lots of bloat stuff that wasn't here before, they keep adding more and more during the installation process, you have to just click million times, skip, skip or whatever. Finally, you can see Windows Desktop. The quality is not great because, uh, you know, this is just VNC, but you can, for example, use RDP, you can configure RDP. But what I want to show you, there is one more thing that we have to do. If we search for Device Manager, you will probably have some stuff still here that do not have drivers. I have only one item, but you might have more. But remember that you still have that ISO attached to this uh, Windows 11. So basically what you can do, you can click that folder, you can open this vert.io ISO, and if you scroll down, you have an installer here. It's called vert.io-win-gt-x64. And you can simply double click on that, run that installer, and this will take care of all of the missing drivers that you might have here. So instead of manually searching for them, you just run this, I say next, accept the agreement, next, next. Just, I mean, sorry, on this field, you have to make sure that they are actually, there are no red X's next to them. We want them all available, but by default they are, so yeah, should be fine. Next, and install. And I say yes. You might see this portion flicker uh, several times. And now it found the driver because <laughs> that question mark just disappeared. Now I can say finish and we've got our Windows ready to use. I think it might be worth to manually now restart it again and only then continue working with your Windows 11 on Proxmox 9. And that's all what I wanted to show you in this video. I hope that helps. And remember, if you want to learn more about Proxmox or about programming or AWS cloud, computer networking, etc., please visit our Automation Avenue platform, where you will find loads and loads of very useful materials. Thank you for watching. Marek.